Yo, what's going on, everybody? It is 1 p.m. here in Crystal Lake, Illinois. It means it's time for another live stream. Today is Friday, October 13th. It's Friday the 13th, 2023. Hopefully, you guys are having a good day. Hopefully, you guys are having a safe day out there. There's a lot of craziness going out there in the world, and um, it breaks my heart to hear about it. Uh, and I hope you guys and all your family uh, are doing safe uh, out there. Today, uh, we got a really big package here from Adidas, and um, it's a package that I got. I, I peeked at it inside a little bit because it arrived right before um, my Italy trip with Adidas eyewear, and I wanted to make sure it wasn't something that I had to bring with me for that trip. Uh, turns out it was not. It's a different package from a different branch of Adidas. It should. I, I haven't looked at it completely, but I think it's pretty exciting. We'll take a look at it in a minute. But before we do that, let's say hi to everyone listening on the audio-only version of the podcast. Hopefully, you guys are having a dry and safe run out there today. Uh, I got out there, and uh, the forecast has been for rain all day. I saw for a brief moment that it wasn't raining. It was just overcast, a little bit windy. So I thought I'd go out for a run. By the time I got out there, it started raining. It didn't rain too hard, and there was no lightning or thunder. So I was able to get in a nice workout in today. And hopefully that's kind of like your situation. Maybe there is a some rain on the forecast, but maybe you're not going to get that much rain. I got wet for sure. There was still rain, but it, it could have been worse. So it could have been worse. I hope is the best I can wish for you guys today. I think it's just a weird day. Uh, and everyone else uh, that's out there uh, watching this on YouTube later, but not live. Welcome to the number one place to view unboxings in running related spaces. That's going to be my default for when I don't know what else to talk about. You know, what else are we number one in? We've done data entry, taxes, expense reports, cleaning up after dinner. You know, we're number one in all those categories. I'm pretty sure. No one else has shown me a chart otherwise. So I'm going to say, go ahead and say that we're number one in all those. So, um, you know, I think that's where we're at. But, um, yeah. But running related unboxings live, I think we're the only place that does it but we're also the number one place that does it all right let's see who we got here uh in the chat um mark peterson up in minnesota is blaming it on the rain you know what's funny um hold on my hair's doing something funny here i don't know what's going on i just got out of the shower everything looks real goofy all right you know what's been funny thing for me to do is uh when i'm in the car with my daughter I um I go back and forth. Like, is the car a place where I have a captive audience and I can like have conversations with her? Or do I let her drive? Maybe she needs time to decompress. She's a lot like me, so probably she does. Does she need time to decompress and just need some quiet? Does she need a minute and she just wants to relax on her phone? I go back and forth. But if there is an old song on, I will let her know in terms of how old I was in relation to her when this song was on the radio. And you're bringing up Millie Vanilli here. But yesterday, Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch was on. And I was like, did you know that I was exactly your age when this song was popular? And she's like, really? It's a really old song. I'm like, it doesn't feel that old to me, but it is. You're right. <laughs> um, all right, Eric Paramount says he's got no running yet. Still in my week of running Lent. Can't wait to run again on Monday. Seven-day break is great, but need to do it again in spring. All right, there you go. There you go. After a P what was it, a 50K PR? I mean, yeah, good to take some, some rest. Uh, Sleeve Singers here, she says, this is the best running podcast to listen to while picking up your bib for the Baltimore Running Festival. All you guys this weekend. Hopefully the weather forecast improves, um, but if nothing else, Bad weather will take your mind off of the terrible hills that await you on the course, guys. Hopefully you guys have a good race. I really do. Andrew Scott says it's a beautiful day in Indy. Nice. All you Indy people, what do you guys, you guys got a couple weeks, right? It's coming right up for you guys too. Are you guys in peak week now or are you guys in tape? You guys aren't in taper yet, are you? Oh, I don't know. Um, who else we got? Frank Hulier is here. He says, um, <laughs> I do not believe I could recognize a Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch song. Yeah, I wonder what happened to the Funky Bunch 
Um, but Marky Mark went on to have a, a wonderful other career outside of music, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, today's, uh, there was a new Laura Green. Well, Laura, I don't know if she, re I think she reposted one um, about cross-country parents. And uh, there was a line in there that just reminded me of a Marky Mark Saturday Night Live skit. Um, and it just, say hi to your mother for me. Uh, just definitely <laughs> reminded me of that. I just finished reading um, or listening to the audiobook, um, this, like Bossy Pants, Tina Fey's audiobook. I don't know why I decided to pick that one up, but I thoroughly enjoyed that one. Um, and I don't know if she wrote the sketch for Marky Mark. I don't, I, she didn't mention it at all. But whenever I, I think about like kind of like recent Saturday Night Live, that one with Marky Mark, say hi to your mother for me. That one always comes to mind i don't know why. i don't it's not even the best thing that they've done you know kind of recently but it always comes up i don't know um james says i like that jacket co what is it it's from craft um it's got like a cinchy thing in the back in case you need to tighten it up but it's like a a crew neck hood very packable i put this in my pack when we were running up in chamonix it's got like these air holes on each side so like if it's too hot you get more airflow in here. I think that's what these are. Yeah. See? Little vents. One on each corner. And the way they, like, just the whole, it gives very much members-only vibes in, like, the fit of the jacket and, like, the material and stuff. Um, but I definitely like it. And it's very packable. There's, like, a little strap in here in one of the pockets. Um, so that way, if you want to, like, flip it up you tuck it all in the pocket and then you can wrap it up somehow i don't know but i didn't i couldn't quite figure out how it all works but it's really nice and comfy all right kyle says it's two weeks and one day to indy all right so you guys are getting into maybe one last workout this weekend there you go there you go um mataku says hey co i'm doing the detroit international half on sunday i need good juju trying to pr well good luck to you Hopefully we'll have good, good weather. What's the weather going to be like? Hopefully you guys will get good weather. So hopefully I come back Monday for a bell ring. You should look into the race close and you go underwater. Yeah, I don't like running in tunnels. Uh, <laughs> I've thought about the, the full marathon before because like if you don't get into Chicago, you know, what are the other races within a couple hundred miles from here that are around the same time? That one usually comes up. Indy usually comes up. Twin Cities comes up usually as well, you know. So I've looked at it for, for before for sure. I don't know. I'm keep I keep thinking like maybe I'll do something with Tommy one year. You know. Mm. Jesus, <laughs> these zippers are aerodynamic braking. Nice, very very kit. Man, that car was awesome. Uh, Vanessa Martinez says, it's a Steve Harrington jacket? I don't know that reference. You're gonna have to explain that one to me. Hmm. Dan Dalton says, it's apparently it's the Craft Pro Hypervent. Is that what it's called? Pro Hypervent? It's not, It's a really nice material. It's super lightweight, but it's like, it keeps you nice and warm. It's good on top of the mountain. But I was like, I was wearing a Craft shirt after my shower and I was like, I need a jacket. I, it's a little chilly, so. Ah, um, Vanessa Martin. It's from Stranger Things. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I only, you know what? I only watched the first season of Stranger Things, and then I don't know what. I just lost interest in the other season. Maybe. It, hmm. I think my youngest daughter is probably still too young for it. I mean, she's old enough. I just don't. We like we love Halloween in our house. It's our favorite holiday. But my kids aren't into super spooky stuff. And like at one point, like my wife and I were talking about how it's Friday the Thirteenth here in Crystal Lake. And we're like, oh boy. And um, my daughters don't understand the reference. So like, but we're like, we're not going to show that movie to them. You know. Sanger Dream guys, we need Kofuzi Run Club branded members only jackets. <laughs> that would be as about as elite as Kofuzi Run Club gets. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, Baldi says for Houston, you should do a burrito group dinner. Maybe maybe we'll just all meet up at Chipotle. I do like Chipotle the night before. I, I feel like Chipotle the night before a race is fine for me. 
Um, I feel like for a lot of other people, they might be a little bit uh, iffy. But I have a hard time going to Houston and like finding the Chipotle. I don't think I've ever had a Chipotle in Houston. I feel like I feel like you should get kicked out. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Um, uh, Fiona nineteen seventy seven says I'm doing a Halloween five k tonight. That is going to have scary actors on the course. Should be fun. I mean, what a great day to do a five k, a spooky five k. Today's today's a day to do it. You know. Mm, and where'd it go? Mike the Runner says hi. Glad to be live here again. I have listened to every pod I missed live. Oh, welcome. How was the Garmin 265 running today? I just bought one today as well. So I ran with this today. Um, I haven't, it was great using the, uh, I did the workout uh, managed by the watch. Um, it was it was great. Just like using my regular 255. It's brighter than the 255 for sure, which I appreciate. But here's the thing I didn't like. It, even though I did switch this to always on, it's still like when you're not looking at it, it does like low power mode. So it doesn't stay full brightness all the time, which I guess makes sense. Um, but I just don't like to have to do that all the time. Um, I did switch my watch face to something else. Um, but even though it should be always on when you're doing a workout, when you're not looking at the watch, it's slightly dim. And there was a couple times when I like just flicked my wrist up and it like took a second for it to like the amount of time that I would have needed to get the information I needed, which I'm not like sitting here reading the watch. But like, so it's like a that fraction of a second is normally how little I look at it. I just want to know how many minutes and seconds left for this interval. You know, by the time that I was already like ready to put my wrist back down before the watch turned brighter again, that happened a couple times. So that was a little bit annoying. I'll have to see if I, like, I get used to that or if that persists. That's the only thing. And then I still, I was look, I've been looking for like an aqua, I think that's the name of this color, aqua, an aqua colored Velcro strap. Cause I'd like to have it color matched, but I think I'm just gonna use my existing generic Amazon ones to, for this. Um, and also I had a long sleeve shirt on and I feel like it kept pushing the watch down. So I haven't gone back to look at the heart rate yet to see if that was uh, accurate-ish or not based on my effort, you know, so we'll see. Uh, Viet Nguyen says, we need Kofuzi Run Club licensed selfie sticks. That's something that I've thought about for a long time because I remember, oh, I forget what his name was. He used to have this really fantastic YouTube channel. He was a YouTuber photographer out of uh, Utah. And he would use the, um, what did everyone use before gimbals got really cheap? They were um, basically like this centripetal force kind of thing. And so like it was a really long stick on a handle that had like basically like a, um, a low friction like ball bearing on it or something like that. And you would use the, those things and you could do like gimbal type moves and it wouldn't require batteries, but you would literally put weights to balance out your camera rig on it. So it was like basically a, a zero battery gimbal. I forget his name. He had a huge, huge YouTube channel. Um, and then at some point he had like a brand because he was using them so well that like, and he always incorporated like kind of behind the scenes into the video too so you could see what he was using. So he had his own like branded one. And I'm like, one day I will have a Kofuzi selfie stick. But I'm just like, uh, the selfie sticks that I like break frequently you know what i mean like that dji one that i really liked i broke it already you know so i'm just like uh, i don't want to put my name on something that's i know is going to break in like a couple months you know i don't know mm. well, oliver says chipotle is raising their prices fourth time in the last two years are they really chipotle has been getting expensive i mean it, it was always a little bit pricier compared to like other like like lunch options before but like when i i mean i guess now my kids are getting older so now I'm, you know like four meals at a time is when i go you know it just feels like a lot you know does you want extra guac in this economy <laughs> yeah that's so funny um frank says did your new watch grab your old workouts or do you have to reprogram one from scratch um in the middle 
So uh, I thought that they would port them all automatically, all like the workouts I had before. It didn't, but um, they all live in the app. And then from the app, you could just go, I just picked the one that I wanted to do today that I had made before. And I just said it, send it to this, to this other watch. And then it sent it like super fast. So. It's just Mark says, I just bought the 255 and really like it. I didn't see the extra value in the 265. See, that's, I think that's the angle that I'm going to take with this. Um, because I, I love the 255 and I've been running with it for a while. So I'm like, do you need to upgrade? You know, that I, that for me is a big question and I'm, I'm not convinced. I don't know, but I'm not, yeah, but I'm not sure. I have to, I, you know, I've been, a, I've had it for a day and I've been running, I went on a, one run with it, you know. Mm. Dan Dalton says, Co, I'm looking on Craft's website and they sell a mystery box containing a random jacket and a hoodie. You should get that for an unboxing. That sounds like a great idea. I feel like more brands should have that. Just mystery boxes. <laughs> I don't know why I love this idea so much. If there if there really is a mystery box, I'm gonna buy it. Um, because I do love craft stuff, you know. All right, Tony says, shake your wrist before bringing it up to view. That's what you, what I do. Okay. Okay, I'll try that while I'm on the run. It doesn't seem to do it when I when I'm looking at it now. But maybe I got to give it a good shake. Okay, I'll, I'll figure that because I feel like after a while that'll just be like second nature. You won't even notice it. Sue N says, "Hey, co fam, what is this cat? Look at this cat over here. I used to have a cat like that. Our cat's name was Fuzzy, and he was fu he had long hair, Fuzzy. Anyway, hey, co fam, working remote today in the middle of a online workplace violence prevention training. That's a good one." All right, Calvin says, uh, all right, you guys are talking about like running our products. I feel like we do not need any of these products that you guys are talking about. Dominic Smirnowski is talking about, we need Kova's Run Club licensed toilet paper with coin embroidery. Is there a such, there's no way, you can't do custom embroidery on your toilet paper, can you? I don't think so. That's not a thing. That's not even a thing. Um, Calvin says, you need Kofuzi stickers, or the Dragon logo, a non-elite sticker, elite jogger. Yo, what's going on? Yo, what's going on would be funny. Maybe I'll make it like in the guise of uh, Yo MTV raps, like like that. I don't know. Um, but I've thought about stickers. Because the stickers, they don't take up a lot of space. They could just sit in the shelf, and I can mail them out. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I ran out of uh, of labels. I got one of those like uh, the heat printer things that prints labels. The, the labels like this one, kind of like this one. So I have a machine that does that and it has, takes a certain kind of sticker label. I ran, I, I ran out. More are coming today. So once I can, I did order more singlets. So there will be a restock. But once I get the first batch of singlets out, then I can, then I will start thinking about other stuff. We might, I might want to add. I don't know. Scott says, though, there's nothing better than a Kofuzi koozie. <laughs> I'm glad you guys like that. It's a very silly thing, but I'm, I love it. I absolutely love it. Brian Lang says, Kofuzi with a streamer backpack it would be insane. Imagine streaming during a race. I mean, what I, I, I would love to know what they do at like, uh, UTMB. What's in the back? How are they doing that? Who are they? What are the pieces that go to that? Like, there's the the camera runner that follows like Wamsley around. You know, he's got a GoPro that broadcasts to something in his backpack that's like connected, right? And that streams out the signal from the mountains to Chamonix. I'm like, how does that? How does that do that? I don't need to go that far. I guess maybe I would. I don't know, but I think, imagine if I live streamed an entire race, that would definitely get me DQ'd, I feel like, if I did that. Well, and how would I even put the backpack on? I don't, I don't know. Um, Jay Prozis says, Co, when is the singlet restock? I put in the order yesterday. They said four weeks. 
so I don't know if it'll happen for New York. So they said that they would try to get the factory to prioritize the order, but I don't know that that order is big enough for them to prioritize it. Um, but yeah, when it comes in, you guys will you guys will be first to know here for sure. Ryan Flake says, aren't they making another world major? They are. And so my goal is that's my urgency in trying to do uh, my last two majors that I need for my six star by 2024. So that way, if I do that, then London and then Berlin, that'll be my six stars. And then I think by 2025, there might be a seventh star. And I would like to be the um, one of the first batches of seven star finishers. All right, Daniel Burton says, box time, let's get to the box. All right, this box is from Adidas, um, from DHL, which I don't, you guys are surprised that DHL still exists? DHL um, has been around for a long time. They're still around. I just don't see them quite as often as I see some of these other brands. All right, so this is a very like special package in here. Where's my knife? I think it's pretty cool. I kind of looked peeked in, so I know what it is, but I haven't seen the whole thing. Uh oh, it kind of broke, guys. Um, all right. So I think I'm gonna have to kind of reassemble this, but I think you'll I think you'll get the idea. It's from Adidas. It's uh, a box, and I'll put it together. I'll show. I'll put a. I'll put a picture on Instagram. But it says illegally fast, all over the place. Um, this did not do so well. And inside of this illegally fast box <laughs> is um, a pair of Primex Strung Twos. I don't know what's going on here. Um, they did have it like roped in here really nice. So I'm going to, I am going to try and like put this thing back together because it looks, I think that it looks pretty cool. I'll try to get this fixed for you guys and we'll look at it on Monday. But I can't get the shoes out because they're like tied into the box. It's pretty cool. At least it wasn't glass. But it's cool, it says like, add a zero. And there is like a handle, so I think eventually, I was supposed to like pull it out. I, th I think I, nothing's broken. I think I can reassemble it. And then it's tied in with these, basically like these speed lace things to go right here. And this is the different color than what I have already. Like I already told Adidas that I'm like, uh, you know, I just, I already, I went ahead and bought a pair of the Primex Strung 2. Um, you don't have to send it to me anymore. And they never just responded. I'm guessing like they had already put in the order from the company that like puts together these packages. Here it is. You know, there's a lot. I thought this was like more of like just like a light blue colorway. There are specks of red more throughout the entire upper than I was expecting. So there's like bits of it up here. I didn't realize that. I mean, there is that little bit up here, like in the trim of the tongue, but this is nice. You got like a red, white, and blue outsole too. Interesting colors. This one seems taller than mine. Why does this seem taller than the one that I have? It seems way bigger than the one that I have. I ran in my yellow ones this morning. This seems so much bigger. Is it a different size? I can't find the sizing. Here. No, it's the right size. It just seems giant compared to mine. And there was something else that fell out. They put in some sunglasses in here, too. Ooh, look at this. And this is different than what I got 
from Adidas eyewear when I went on that trip. I wonder if it's all part of the same system. Or if it's different. So these, oh, these are very different. Check these out. I'm not sure that these work for me. Um, this shape is very aggressive. But apparently, you can detach the uh, eyepieces or like the parts that go onto your ears. You gently pull up and rotate the temple, and then you release it from the lens, and then you can put on a different one. And then you could put on like this clear one. Should we try that? Let's try it. All right, gently pull up and rotate. This feels like I'm gonna break this for sure. Pull up and rotate. I don't know how to do this. We're gonna figure this out. All right, gently pull up and rotate. Oh, there we go. Ah. It comes off actually pretty easy. You don't have to rotate, just pull up. And how do you get them on? I didn't read the rest of the instructions. Mm, I can't figure it out. There's only removal instructions. There's no reattachment instructions. I almost said something else that I think you guys probably would have thought was dirty. All right. Can we get them on there? Mm, no, that didn't work. What is this supposed to attach to? I'm not sure. Maybe I can get the other one. I really want to try these clear ones because I like the idea of having clear shields for running in the winter just to help keep some of the cold off my face. Guys, I cannot get this. Maybe I need to rotate and then put it on. I may have broken these guys. All right. Um, Daniel Burton wants to know, what's the stack on the Prime X2? It's 50 millimeters. They wrote it right on the side. It's right on the side of the box. Um, Lollipi says it's a sexy shoe. I do like them very much. Of course, I wish they were like an ounce and a half lighter, but they're a lot of fun to run in. I ran in them this morning. Uh, Super Engine said it looks pretty patriotic. I mean, the blue is not the right blue and the red's not the right red, but you know, definitely a red, white, and blue color pattern going on here. And there's more red to it than I thought there would be like when you look at pictures on the internet um uh, <laughs> it's, it's a primax 2 with its own charcuterie board <laughs> uh, that's funny um all right what else you got here um uh, Frank says it's a very big shoe. It, it just does look big. I mean, uh, maybe I'll have to compare it to my the one that I have. I don't know. Brian Lang says the colors remind me of the OG NMDs. Yeah, you know what's interesting is like the NMDs were really popular for casual wear in the non-running public, and Ultra Boosts were also really popular in the non-running public. I never understood why the NMDs never became like super popular in the running community. That never made sense to me. I'm like, what? It should have been. I really want to get these things on. I don't know how to get these on. And I feel like I'm going to break them. I think, I, yeah, I'm just going to leave that alone. Hmm. Cosmic Battle Mackle, these are strong glasses. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, and Scuba Sun said that the, the sunglasses are too small. I think so. Eliza said they seem small. I know. I have a big, I have a wide head. You know. 
<laughs> Being Ramsey Dude are illegally stylish. <laughs> uh, and Martha says, they are, the sunglasses are not flattering on you. They make you look like an insect. They did look a little bit strange. Baldi said, Cyclops in the house. <laughs> Uh, and Navy A. Trujillo says, Couple's turned to Steve Aoki with those sunglasses. You know, that that's a really nice compliment. Because you know what? I think Steve Aoki is pretty, pretty awesome. Um He has so many interesting facts about him. I don't you know, here's the other thing. I don't know how to get this. I, there's gotta be more instruction there. Um his dad is the man who started Benny Hanna. Hopefully I'm not better spreading rumors. That's my understanding. Um and his big thing is cake. And he worked with Asics long before I ever worked with Asics. Do you guys remember the Steve Aoki shoe? There was a Steve. A I don't know. I don't think it was called the Steve Aoki, but Steve Aoki was the one that like was on the campaign. Do you guys remember that one? It was full. It wasn't all gel, but there was a lot of gel in it. Anyone else remember that? Am I the only one that remembers that? Remember that? Um. T.W. Randolph, too, says, somehow those glasses make me think of Keanu Reeves. That's all. That's awesome. Um, those are two celebrities that I would be very happy if people started confusing me as. Um, someone, I think the the most accurate Kafuzi looks like um, statement that every, anyone ever made was, um, have you guys ever seen the movie Bullet Train? It's a very weird movie. Um, I watched it on an airplane. And, um, you know, the, the guy's dad, um, who has like the samurai sword, that guy, um, someone's like, Kofuzi looks like that guy on a side quest. And I was like, that's so funny. Um, I think we're about the same age. <laughs> and he had like a salt and pepper beard in that one, much more full than I can grow. But yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, <laughs> Eric Paramount says those sunglasses are from the distant future of the year 2000. <laughs> oh, <that's> so funny. <laughs> uh, and Frank says, I wish they would could make the RX wraparound sunglasses without the weird double layer thing. I think I think that they I, I think that they just can't. That's why that's why I think that they had to do the insert thing with the sunglasses that I had um, on that eyewear trip. Okay, so it says, I keep reading this thing. This is the detachment. And it just says to reattach, repeat backward. I try, I've been doing that. But the other thing I don't know how to do, how do I get the nose piece off of this thing? There's no instructions on that at all. So I got to do some research. Figure out how do I take the nose piece off? There's no nose piece on this other one. I don't know. These are too smart. These are too well engineered for me. Kevin says, Cone needs some pit vipers. You know what's funny? Um, what's funny is when I go to uh, my kids cross country and track meets and like the junior high school kids are, are racing in their pit, in pit vipers. I think that's really amazing. I think it's cute and funny and awesome. <laughs> Mark Peterson, is this the polls all over again? It, it probably, probably. I'm probably doing something wrong. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I eventually figured out the polls with your guys' help. These I'm not going to figure out. I'm going to need some time <laughs> to figure it out. Steve Zabrowski says, I was on the train to O'Hare Monday with Simon. He's the pace director for Sydney. Oh, he's a pacer director for Sydney and paced the 320 in Chicago. He said in so many words that they're shoe in for number seven and they can accommodate 40 to 45,000 runners. That's amazing because that's, I think, double what they had this year. And so I think like the Sydney Marathon this year had like 20, I think they needed to have 14 or 17,000. I think they had 21,000 runners starting. Like, uh, I don't know how many actually finished, but they had 21,000 bibs for the in terms of the entries i think the year before they were 12 and the year before that it was like seven so that race has like ballooned in size in order to become the major but that's pretty cool that you were sitting next to the pacer director nice um all right well we're gonna have to all get ready for sydney 
Um, and for anyone that's going to do the World uh, Masters Championship, that's going to be in Sydney for 2024. So, 40 to 45,000 runners, that's a good number. That's a big number. That means people have a good chance of it. Nicholas Holland said, I missed the first batch of singlets. How can I make sure to get one for the restock when I can't make the live streams very often? Uh, I would say join the Kafuzi Run Club Strava group because that's one of the first places. It'll go there. The link will go there before it goes to Instagram. So, AJ says, Moab 240 just started. That's a wild race. 240 miles. All right, Midlife Runner says, Co, running shoe question of the day. See, I don't my soundboard. I don't have sounds. I think I'm gonna have to bring the soundboard back. It says, Primex Strung 2 or the New Balance 1080 version 13? Those are two very different shoes. I would say though, um, and you, you use them differently, there aren't a lot of, well, here's the thing. There aren't a lot of shoes like the Primex Strung 2. There's a lot of shoes that can serve in the same role, like just, you know, a carbon plated racer. If you have one, or if you have an older one at this point, you know, that you can use them similarly, use them for long run workouts, threshold mile repeats, that kind of thing. Um, but there is not a lot like it. The 1080 version 13 is great. There are similar ish shoes to it. You know what I mean? So like that's, it's not as unique. Although both of them have a very small list of shoes that I feel like are interchangeable. I would go Primex Strong too. Brian Lang says you're right. Steve Aoki is the son of the Benny Hanna Empire. <laughs> That's so funny, Benny Hanna Empire. Mm. Mark wants to know how my sheet cake throwing skills. I've never tried throwing a sheet cake before. I have tried throwing a pie before, and I'm not great at it. You know. Kevin Hong says, uh, Hiroyuki Sanada. I think that's the person that pe someone told me that I look like. And I was like, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Suzanne said, Love Bullet Train, the movie, and the. It's a book? Is, is the whole Thomas the Train thing in the book? I feel like that was like something new that they added. Kevin says, That. That guy, what's his name? Hiroyuki Sanada is in everything. Bullet Train, John Wick 4, Endgame, Westworld. He is in him. He is in a lot of stuff. Adam says, this is a great question. Um, what do you think of the petition to move the trial start from 6 a.m. to noon? I don't see 6 a.m. because of TV coverage. I don't. I could see 8 a.m. So I didn't know that the petition was to move it to 6 a.m. Um, and I think that's ridiculous. Um, I was listening to M the uh, Sidious Mag podcast interview of Emily Sisson yesterday, and she very helpfully pointed out that 6 a.m. isn't even sunrise in February in Florida. So you're going to start a race in the dark? I don't think that's a great idea. Uh, I mean, like, Indianapolis starts in the dark. You know, I don't love that. Miami starts in the dark. Uh, has, Miami was high energy, but I didn't love that either. It was kind of scary, in fact, because um, you're running down this giant highway. And it's a really big decline, and it's dark. I know that that condition doesn't exist in uh, the Orlando course, but like I just think that that's weird and like it's strange both on its face. Like you really want six a.m. You guys are wanting to wake up two o'clock to eat your food and get re start getting ready. I don't think anyone actually wants, who, who actually wants 6 a.m., number one. Um, because if you're from Boulder or Flagstaff, that's 4 o'clock your time. 4 a.m. start, really? I don't think that it makes any sense. Um, it'll guarantee that it would be super annoying for spectators uh, in person, super annoying for all the people trying to set up the race, volunteers, um, police, 
it's just weird. It doesn't make any sense at all. And it's also a ludicrous bargaining position. If you're like, well, what we really want is 9 a.m. So they said noon, we'll say six and we'll meet in the middle. That's one of those like bargaining positions in my mind that would tell me I'm not, you're not serious about negotiating. So I don't even have to entertain that offer kind of thing. I'm, I'm really astonished. I, I didn't read the letter that they wrote, but I'm astonished that there were all these people agreed to 6 a.m. And Emily Sisson was like, eh, there's a lot of people on the Zoom call. I didn't really want to make a big deal about the 6 a.m. I don't want 6 a.m. I'd rather have 8 a.m. or 9 a.m. So like, it's strange. It's strange. Um, we haven't heard yet about what the result was of that call. I, at least I haven't heard yet um, of that meeting that they are supposed to have. Um, and I, I really don't have a, I, I've, I've been one of the people that I'm like, I don't have a problem with noon. Um, I have a very small sample set of data. I raced in Florida once around that time of year and it was below 40 degrees when we started and we started in the dark because it was a morning start and I didn't love it. So, I mean, I, and uh, the last time I was in Florida, it was kind of warm-ish while we were there. Um, it was, again, in late January, and it was not hot any of the days that I was there. So I'm just like, I, I don't, I'm not super concerned about it. But I felt like Emily Sisson made a great point in that, like, it feels like the athlete's sentiment seems to be, if I can extrapolate, I don't want to put words in Emily Sisson's mouth. My my intuition, based on what she said and what other athletes are saying, is that it seems like the athlete position generally seems to be like, well, we don't have the same course as Paris. So let's make it hard in the ways we can make it hard so that we have a good simulator for Paris. So it's not just like a time trial course. And Emily Sisson's position is, look at the racers that we have assembled here. It's going to be an interesting race, and you're going to have to race. It's not going to be a time trial race. You're going to have to battle to get it, to, to get on this team. And I, I agree with her on that one. So, like, I, I don't think we really need to move the time. They've already announced that they've made that decision. But, like, the real skeptical part about me is like, all right, well, they picked that certain time because maybe USATF has in mind a certain team profile that they would like to have already. And so let's make the conditions to the extent we can best benefit those people that we want to have on the team. That's kind of my skeptical position, to say it very opaquely. But, you know, um, I really don't, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, they're never going to get 6 a.m. Oh, Vanessa Martinez says, the actor Hiroyuki Sanada was born in 1960 in Tokyo. Great actor. Oh, he's much older than I am. Okay, we're not the same age. Hmm. <laughs> <sighs> Lalami says, everyone just started roasting Ko when he put on those glasses. <laughs> Laughing emoji. Yeah. They were not ideal for me. I don't know. Um, let me see if my nephew likes them. We'll see. I, I, I want to see what the looks like with the clear lens on. I'll show you guys tomorrow if I can figure it out by then. Mm. Calvin says, should runners who got the Olympic qualifying time have to run the OTQ race? Uh, that's something that I'm not exactly sure on. So everyone's talking about like um, how the women have unlocked the race and now the men need to unlock the race. And everyone seems to be talking about it like, and I don't, I didn't think this was the case, but like going into the trials, if like, only three people had it like should they sit back and if no one else both wins or comes top three and hits the trial standard then they can be on the team without even trying you know what i mean like i i don't i don't 
exactly understand how I thought it was much simpler than that. Um, but people are talking about it like, well, if three Americans have the standard and even if those three who have the standard don't come in first three, the first three who do come in on that day will basically act as if they do have the standard. It's people are talking about the standard in a way that's different than my understanding about it. My understanding was with the women's race, because of the caliber of the competition and the number of women that had hit the Olympic standard, that had gotten gold label status. And so like what gold label status means is that even if with the top three don't have um, the standard, if they win on that day, because maybe the course is hard and not time trial PR kind of worthy, um, given the nature of the competition, the competitors that are there, it, it will be like kind of like a pass. So maybe we're, we're all talking about the same thing. I just don't know how many people you need to have hit the standard for the label to get kind of unlocked is the word everyone's using for that gold label status. So I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. All right, Steve Zabrowski says, you know what though? It is 94 and humid here today. Whoa. If you catch it wrong, you will be wishing it started at 6 a.m. as a runner if that sun is baking you. Oh, okay. I mean, like I said, my data points are very small. And so I feel like leave it at noon with a plan to adjust if the forecast indicates it's going to be hot. We've seen races move before. So I don't, I'm not sure. I just don't know. And Frank says, what's the best place to be training for a warmer race in February? I feel like uh, Orlando is probably a good place to be training. Um, Lindsay Flanagan has hinted that she might go to Australia and train with her coach and train from down there. I just think that then the travel back becomes problematic, but it'll be a place with humidity um, uh, and heat because it'll be summer down there while it is winter up here. So I feel like that's an interesting thing to do. Um, I mean, I think you're looking at like the southernmost locations of the United States. Um, San Diego, maybe if you go Inland Empire, you know, away from the cool breeze of the Pacific, um, could be a good place to train, uh, you know, where the Hummel Toads are from. Um, I think, I don't think that like places like, well, I mean, again, Lindsay Blanding has shown us that you can train in a place like Boulder, um, place with altitude and without humidity and still do well in a hot race if you use a sauna protocol so then uh but boulder and flagstaff are going to be super snowy in the months leading up to february so like that could be problematic because you want to be pounding the pavement a little bit it would be my preference so i would say like tech like southern texas houston austin florida just a lot of places in Florida you could probably train, you know, so. Mm -hmm. KSNT606 says, I love starting at 9 a.m. in Berlin and Tokyo. Hated getting up so early for Chicago. Yeah, Chicago is an early start. It is daylight when you start, but you definitely are getting there in the dark, you know. All right, let's do a couple more, and then I got to go. And then I got to figure out these sunglasses and then reassemble. I'm going to reassemble this box for you guys so you could see it in its full glory. And Kevin Wong says, speaking of altitude, didn't anyone see that Seth Moore ran a Zone 2 marathon and still ran a 244? It's pretty impressive. I remember one time Seth and I had like a discussion about low heart rate running. On, not in person, but online. He's like, if I ran zone two, like that'd be like me doing a workout like every day. I can't run that fast. And I'm like, low heart rate training isn't for you, Seth. <laughs> it's for me. It's not for, I want to get, become something closer to you. Um, that's why I employ low heart rate training. If I could run like you, I wouldn't, I would run even easier than low heart rate or mafetone number training. Yeah, Martha's is, his heart rate is ridiculous. I mean, he's a machine. He runs, he works super hard, and is gifted. I mean, his brother's a great runner too. Mm 
Mm. Frank says, I think for a place to train warm for February, I was thinking like Quito. I don't even know where Quito is. Or New Zealand. Is, does New Zealand get hot? I don't I don't I have I have very little knowledge of New Zealand. Mm-hmm. Sung Binna says, I bought a Polar H10 heart sensor. Do you wear a heart rate monitor every day or temporal interval days? I wore it every day when I was training with a heart rate monitor. I ran with a heart rate monitor every day for a couple of years now, and I feel like I'm pretty good. Um, and I do usually switch out all my wristbands for Velcro straps so I could sit higher up, um, kind of like the Polar H10. Not the H10. What's the one? Verity, the Verity Sense, that thing. Um, so I can be a little bit higher. Um, so it's accurate-ish for me. Um, but I have a good sense of kind of like what the efforts correlate to. Um, and it's accurate enough to let me know if something's really going wrong with me, kind of like that I'm not quite yet sensing. Um, but yeah, but when I was training with a heart rate monitor every day, that way, you know, like I wanted my watch to be able to see, like, here's what it looks like on my easy days. And here's what it looks like on my hard days. And I wanted it to know everything to just be matched up because then in your data, if you're using that heart rate monitor for your workout days, but then you were getting an inaccurate wrist reading, then it would look like to your watch or any other data crunching that you were doing that you were just running hard every day. And that would confuse a lot of algorithms, you know? Ah, Vanessa Martin says, Quito, Ecuador is part of the capitals of the world song. Oh, is it really? I don't know the capitals of the world song. I want to look at that. Interesting. All right. That's going to be it for me today, guys. Uh, today's Friday, so I won't see you guys again till Monday. Hopefully, you guys all stay safe today and all your family members stay safe today. Uh, and I hope you enjoy all your runs this weekend, especially all you Baltimore people getting after it, getting those runs in. Hopefully, you have great weather and are safe out there. I can't wait to hear about how you guys do on Monday. I'm going to bring the soundboard back because I miss the sounds. We need the sounds. So we'll get some cowbells going for next week. In the meantime, until I see you guys again, be safe out there, everybody. Thanks.